Okay, you're up. Good afternoon. Uh, today, me, myself, is Anthony Corey, and this is Colin Burns, and today we plan to present to you our service department plan for B and K G. So today we're gonna focus on the turbochargers. We're gonna focus on kind of the new technology in today's era that might have an effect on our service department, and we're gonna kind of explain what we plan on doing with this new technology within our service department. So turbochargers are going to be featured on the 2019 Jeep Wrangler and the 2019 Jeep Cherokee. Now we plan on focusing our aspects with training for our technicians on these turbochargers for the new technology. And also we plan on providing uh, documents and pretty much any kind of information that can help these technicians service these new Jeeps with the turbocharger. The Jeeps are also going to be diesel. So diesel is definitely coming into... They actually already are. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, diesels are already happening within Jeep and we want to be able to focus on, again, more training for our staff, our team members, our service, uh, or our technicians. And yeah, so that is expected for 2020 is to really hit with Jeep. Jeep plans on doing um, <laughs> hybrids and all that in 2020. Now, autonomous vehicles, we're still unsure about how far along, you know, Jeep is with autonomous vehicles. Uh, autom autonomous vehicles are obviously being talked about, they're being reviewed and they're being tested, but we're not, we're unsure about how we'll handle the autonomous vehicles. We don't believe that we'll have to worry about that for the next 30, 40 years or so. Um, vehicle safety systems are enhancing, they're getting, you know, more complicated and more complicated. And so we just want our staff to be fully trained on all these different tech, all these different um, advancements within technology. Now, we can go into the overview of options and Colin's gonna take over this part. Okay, so pretty much, we have a pretty simple layout. You have it right there in the packet. Um, we're gonna start with just the service manager, which is us. The, everybody's gonna pretty much answer to us first. The advisors are gonna be directly under us and each of them are gonna have their own responsibilities as well. We'll get later into that a little bit later. Um, and then we'll have a shop foreman overseeing a lot of the technicians. As far as pay goes, the service manager is gonna get a base pay of $45,000 a year to start, along with 2% of the department's earnings. Uh, the idea is that we're promoting teamwork throughout, so our technicians are gonna be paid the same way. Um, they're gonna receive a base hourly pay, along with um, a profit-based bonus. The idea is instead of doing it by the job, that they'll all kind of work together to get all the jobs done because there's going to be stuff that, you know, one doesn't know, others do, um, and stuff like that. And then as far as the levels go, because Mopar requires specific training, it's supposed to take months, uh, we plan on having all of our technicians at the same level because they all will be going through the same training and they will be learning all the procedures that they do. Now, with that being said, the technicians that have the most experience for certain jobs are going to be the ones that tackle those first. With the idea that the others are supposed to pitch in and help as well and hopefully gain some experience from it. And then Anthony's going to describe the support staff a little bit better. Yep, so for the support staff for our service department will consist of the following. We will have porters and the department will have two porters. One will be part-time and the idea is that the one who will be part-time they'll kind of switch on and off. So when one porter is working uh, the other one will be off and then vice versa. Um, the porters will be paid an hourly wage of $12 an hour and the main responsibilities of the porters basically are to move vehicles around, kind of do the smaller work that uh, is needed around the dealership and the service department. Also we will have service advisors. Uh, the service advisors will have three or will have three full-time service advisors. Uh, the service advisors will be paid at a starting salary of $39,000 along with 1% of the service department's monthly profit. Uh, the service advisors will initiate automotive services and repairs, verify warranty and service contract coverages, stuff of that nature. Uh, as you can see here, we'll, we're providing a document or a department layout. Uh, one other thing that I did want to mention was that we'll be those service advisors will be ver verifying like customer concerns. They'll be verifying warranty and service contract coverages, developing estimates, um, 
and writing repair orders and resolving basically any customer issue that comes into our doors. So without further ado, we will talk about our department layout and why we chose our department layout for that reason. Good. Okay, so for the service department, we're gonna be following FCA's general guidelines that they laid out for us. Uh, for a medium-sized facility like we're planning on having as a whole, which you know we didn't decide on, is going to be uh, approximately 9,000 square feet following their guidelines with 12 service stalls, two wash stalls, the Mopar Express service lane, uh, a street front service drive, and a customer waiting area. You'll see in your handouts, that's of the full dealership. The service department will be in the back, and then the smaller Mopar Express lane service area will be in the front of the dealership with access in through the side. Uh, the idea is customers will be able to come into that area of the dealership where the two lube taps will, lube techs will be to get like basic stuff done like oil changes or having air filters replaced even if they just want like their windshield wipers put on and then obviously the main service area with all the service stalls are going to be where most of the technicians are camped out where all the work happens and then the reason that we're going to have the 12 even though we only have the eight regular technicians to start is in case of future expansion if we have to hire on more techs, we'll have the space to do so with more service stalls. And then we have some procedures that Anthony's going to discuss. So basically, what we're, how our, how we're going to handle like, I write customers, customers who maybe are unsatisfied, unhappy, loud, rude, etc. We're going to have like a basic procedure of how we're going to go through. Uh, these customers and kind of how we're going to resolve the situation. First, we want our customers to, or our technicians to remain calm. That is the biggest thing is remaining calm, kind of understanding how the, or what the problem is and listening. We really want the service advisors and, you know, even technicians, if they're out on the floor dealing with these customers, we, we need them to listen. We need them to understand what the problem is and then go from there and make sure that they fully understand and make sure that the customer kind of, they're both on the same page. Um, like I said, listening is one of the biggest key factors when somebody comes in, you know, you don't want to talk over that person and get things jumbled around and get them just even more mad and want to leave your dealership. You want to, you want to get these customers in your dealership and you want them to leave happy, even though they came in unsatisfied. Uh, when you don't know when, when a, uh, when a customer asks you a question and you don't know the answer, we want our technicians to not just lie. We want them to say, you know what, if we, if we don't know the answer at this moment, we would you know, go up to a higher power possibly and get you an answer, but we don't want them to kind of just throw something together and you know, realize that the, the customer is, obviously knows that you are being lied to. That's one of our biggest things that we want to focus on. Um, and then apologize gracefully for whatever problem is occurring. We make sure that, you know, once it's resolved, we want to apologize for any inconvenience that these, the customer may have had within our service department and send them on their way, you know, happy and hopefully they come back to our service department. And then finding the solution, that's the biggest thing. You know, a customer comes in, has a problem, and you're going to do everything in your power to find a solution for them, you know, even if it's Give them, giving them a free oil change for their next visit, anything of that nature, we want to make sure that these customers leave satisfied. That's one of our biggest things. So these technicians, the way our technicians will kind of receive the same, same treatment as a customer being bringing their vehicle into the dealer. Um, service advisor documents the symptoms from a customer. It's pretty basic. Uh, then the technician confirms the problem and follows steps looking into uh, such things as um, service bulletins, TSBs, anything of that nature, kind of just reviewing the repair order. The, the technician then provides service advisor with the findings of their problem and then diagnosing the concerns for the customer. So that's kind of how we want to handle the situation within the dealership, kind of how we want our people to work and handle themselves with our customers. So kind of like in summary, the big things that we're focusing on with this service department is we want to make sure the customers are taken care of, whatever it takes. Our service advisors are going to follow these procedures to make sure that happens. All, get, all the customers are going to receive the same treatment. And the idea is that all the technicians will work together. Not one's going to be doing more work than the other because all of their income is going to depend on it. So do you have any questions for us? I do not. Okay. Perfect. Thank you guys for listening.